All right, so welcome to another grade nine advanced science video, a coronavirus lab video that will replace an experiment that is normally done at the beginning of our third unit on solubility. I'm Mr. Papnode. And I'm Mrs. Watts. Um, we're at Grant Park High School, if you're watching. So today in this experiment, we're gonna make a solution. And we're gonna make a solution out of a fancy orange chemical called potassium dichromate, we're gonna be dissolving it in some water here with us. We're using potassium dichromate because it's a nice bright orange colored uh, compound. And it's gonna make a nice looking solution in the video. Um, in Ms. Watts's test tube on the side here, she's gonna be using five milliliters of, of water. I'm gonna be using 20 milliliters of water. Now, in your, if you're watching this as a grade nine advanced student and you're opening up your booklet to this lab, there are some definitions that you need to know. So I'll give the first definition. When you're making solutions, you're always gonna be dissolving a solute. The solute is the substance that is being dissolved. So in our experiment, the solute is this potassium dichromate, this orange colored salt that we have here in the dish. We're gonna be dissolving that, so it's the solute. Okay, the solvent is what, is what the solute is dissolved in. In this lab, the solvent is water. All right, so a solute and a solvent. Now, if we simply poured some of the solute into a container with the solvent, at that point, we'd have a mixture. We'd have a mixture of two different substances, potassium dichromate, and water, but it would not be the same everywhere. The salt would sink to the bottom of the mixture. It would be much more concentrated at the bottom. It would be almost watery at the top. So that mixture would be described as a heterogeneous mixture. It's a mixture, but it's not yet a solution. Okay, and so a solution is what we call a homogeneous mixture which is where the solute and the solvent are evenly distributed within the mixture. So when we take that solution, that mixture rather, and we stir it up or we shake it up so that the salt is dissolved and spread out equally throughout the mixture, it's the same concentration everywhere, at that point we have a solution. So a solution, if you want a definition, is a homogeneous mixture a mixture where the concentration is the same everywhere. So we're gonna get started. I've got a test tube here with 20 milliliters pre-measured with our graduated cylinder of distilled water. And this is a test tube with five milliliters that's pre-measured with water. And what we're going to do is simply create saturated solutions. A saturated solution is a solution that has the maximum amount of solute dissolved in it. If it has the maximum amount of salt in it, its concentration will be the highest possible concentration for that salt at a given temperature. All right, so now we've placed a cupcake holder with the salt on the balances, and right now it's reading a mass. I'm gonna zero the balance. So now, as you know, you've used balances in the past, it's pretending, it's as though there's nothing on the pan. If I reach in with my scoop and remove some of the salt, the mass will show a negative number. You may not be able to see that in the video, but it now says negative 0.12. That means I've taken out 0.12 grams. So what Ms. Watts and I are gonna do is very simple. We're gonna take our test tubes. I'm gonna take my 20 mils of water and I'm gonna reach in and take a pinch of the salt I'm going to add that without spilling to my test tube. I'm going to stopper it. All right, so we've both done this and we've just created a mixture. We've got the solvent, the water, and the solute. Most of it is sitting at the bottom, but some of it has dissolved. It's starting to get a little yellow orange color. So right now it's a heterogeneous mixture. It's not yet a solution. So we'll make it a solution. We'll put our Thumbs on top of the stopper. We're gonna shake vigorously until that pinch of salt completely dissolves. Now, at a given temperature, it may take a bit longer, depends how much you've added, but that little pinch of salt, notice I've added 
a tiny bit more than Miss Watts, it should all dissolve. So I'm going to stop there. There's a tiny bit that hasn't dissolved in mine, but let's pretend it has fully dissolved. I could shake for another little bit. We're going to continue adding pinches like you just saw until no more salt dissolves. When we add that last pinch and it doesn't dissolve, even though we've shaken for a long time, we'll at that point have a saturated solution and we'll see how much salt it took for the five milliliters and for the 20 milliliters. I guess, yeah. All right, so we've been shaking now for several minutes. Um, I have now added about 0.5 grams of uh, the potassium dichromate to my test tube. And uh, it's maybe a little bit hard to see from the video, but there might just be a there is just a tiny little bit of crystal left at the bottom of the test tube, um, so not quite all of that has dissolved. Um, so with that, I can be pretty confident that my um, solution is now saturated. All right, so you've been shaking for several minutes and it hasn't completely dissolved. Um, I've added a lot more salt than Miss Watts. I've added 1.34 grams, as you can see. Now I have a lot more water. I have 20 milliliters of water while she had five milliliters. But even after 1.34 grams, all of my salt is dissolved. Now you might notice that the color of the solution is a lot darker than it was before. When you have a colored solute like that, the more concentrated the solution is, the darker it will look. All right, so I'm gonna keep adding more of my salt until I also have a saturated solution. All right, it's taken me a few more minutes than Miss Watts. She had a smaller volume, so she finished faster but I've now got a saturated solution of the potassium dichromate. I can see that it is mostly dissolved, but at the bottom, despite me shaking for the last two or three minutes, there's still a little bit of undissolved salt at the bottom. I could keep shaking, but I'm pretty confident that that's now saturated because there's undissolved salt after several minutes of shaking. It's reached its maximum concentration. It's now saturated. You can see that my mass is 2.38 grams. So I added 2.38 grams to the 20 mils of water. Okay, so I added 0.58 grams to my five mils of water. So if we compare the mass that I added to the mass that Mr. Patnode added, we can see that there's about four times as much mass added to the 20 milliliter graduated or test tube compared to the test tube containing five milliliters. And does that make sense? We had about four times as much solute added and we had about four times as much volume of solvent. Um, and so what we can determine by this is something called um, the concentration. And concentration is given by the formula, uh, the mass of the solute divided by the volume of the solvent, which in this case is water, times 100. That will give us a value measured in grams per 100 milliliters of water. So if we just divided the mass by the volume, we'd have units of grams per milliliter. And that's a little confusing because it sounds like density units. The difference, of course, is that the mass here refers to the mass of the salt, while the milliliters is the milliliters of water. If it were a density calculation, the mass and the volume would refer to the same substance. And we times by 100 so that we get this per 100 milliliters of water, right? So you can use our data here and you can calculate the concentration of Ms. Watts's saturated solution. You can also calculate the concentration of my saturated solution. And one more piece of vocabulary, the concentration of a saturated solution is referred to as the solubility of that salt. So when you have the saturated solutions concentration, you know the solubility of the salt. This was not a very efficient way to find the solubility. It took us several minutes of shaking and making a solution. And in the end, it's not that accurate because I still have undissolved salt. So the actual concentration of my solution would be a little bit less than what you're gonna calculate here. So this is a tedious process to find solubility and it's not that accurate. We're gonna have a better technique in another lab. 
Just a quick point about the solute we are using. It's potassium dichromate, and as you can see from its safety label, there's a lot of GHS pictograms on there. This thing is, is toxic, it's corrosive, it's an oxidizer. It should only be handled carefully because it's got health effects that can affect you if you breathe it in. Luckily, we're both wearing our coronavirus masks and we're wearing gloves. It's also bad for the environment. So we're not going to pour these solutions down the drain. We're going to collect them and, and have them disposed of in an environmentally friendly way at the end of the year. So we use this salt simply because it gives us a nice orange solution, but it is a kind of a toxic chemical to use for this kind of experiment. So I hope that's a good introduction to the first lab in, in the solubility unit. Good luck. Take care.